up, man? What's going on, dude? How are you, brother? You good? I'm very well, man. I'm chilling. What's popping? Nothing much, dude. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate the time. Always, man. Always and forever. <laughs> well, congrats on Weird, man. How's, uh, how's it feel just having that out in the world and everyone enjoying it? Oh, bro, I feel like a little pixie. I'm a little fairy right now. I'm well excited. Yeah? How long does the excitement last after a release? Is it, is um, it a, a until good month next there? Release. Until yeah. the next release. <laughs> and then you like, forget about that one. Um, <laughs> nah, dude, I'm buzzing, man. Everyone's, like, loving it. It's been fucking crazy, to be honest. We're like, yeah. I just couldn't wait to put it out. Do you know what I mean? Because I wrote it. I wrote it last year. But then it needs to come out right now, and everyone loves it. And I'm just like... As I say, I'm, I'm like a little bunny rabbit in the forest bouncing around with me excitement. <laughs> that's, a, that's an accurate description. Um, well, cool. I'm sure they so explain it to you, man. But the, all these questions today are just going to come from your fans, and they're going to ask you whatever the heck they want. And uh, we got a bunch of them from around the world. So let's just get into this. Um, Six puppies. All right. Let's see. Uh, Dominic Squad. Dominico. Yeah, that's uh, okay. There you go. Fan, a fan account. I want to know. Ask him if he can start a cooking show with Adam. And he plans to start a cooking show with Adam. Adam, are you awake? Come here. He's here. He's next to me. Um, everybody's asking me when. Um, say hello to the internet. Hello. Um, they're Not saying Adam. when do when do you want to when we're gonna start a cooking show together? Oh, we're nice. gonna do a segment on the next Young Butcher, I think. Yeah, for sure. Because That's look nice. at me, he's little like little cutie pie. That's there you go. You're waking Adam up. Thanks, <laughs> Adam. Oh, he's all right, man. He's, he needs to arise sometimes. <laughs> on an You're whipping him into shape. I think he's um, gonna cut me a full English breakfast, aren't you? Maybe potentially. Uh, dude, how fun has the Youngblood show been? That's dude, really cool. Dude, it's so mental, man. Like how that even came about. I remember we were supposed to go out of South America, um, but. Everything was getting cancelled. I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to let this rubbish come in between with a con uh, in between the connection with me and my fan base. So, like, we're going to be the first ones to do a live stream. Let's be the first ones to do it. And then they just blew it up. All you out there, they just blew it up. Um, and, like, 72 hours later, and we're in a TV studio, and I'm trying to be the fucking punk rock Jimmy Fallon like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, man. No, it was so cool. I like that you, you, you bring on people that maybe you wouldn't expect. Like, you had 24K Golden on. I thought that was really neat. Absolutely. That's it, man. It's, it's always about, for me, okay, like, I just want to bring on what I'm listening to and, and see what people, do you know what I mean, and see what people think about it, you know, and that's, that's, that's sick. Yeah, you've been jamming out to anything in particular in addition to just weird and your own music? Uh, oh, quarantine? I, absolutely. I love Bieber Doobie right now. I've been listening yeah. to a lot of Bieber Doobie stuff. I mean, it's just amazing to say Bieber Doobie, Bieber <laughs> Doobie. Do you know what I mean? I, I think like someone just cut up like a sound by it, Bieber Doobie. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Bieber Doobie. What else, man? I've been like, like I've been chilling, man. I've been listening to like Bon Iver and stuff. Oh, nice. You know I mean? Some chill stuff? In, in the house, man, I rarely chill, so it's, like, good to, like, you know what I mean, hang out. This is probably the only thing that can make Youngblood chill, you know what I mean? Dude, I think I've watched Green Day Bullet in the Bible DVD three times. Has it been your, is that what you're binging? I was going to ask, like, are you, do you get into TV shows and stuff like that? Oh, dude, I just literally watched that gig, like, three times. I wanted, that's, like, my dream. I want to play, like, Milton Keynes Bowl eventually like, like 60,000 people and just have yeah. everyone flying and we'll just like play a big rock and roll show hell yeah you're well on your way you ever listen to um i was talking to an artist last night about you because she reminded me so much of you in terms of energy is uh kelsey carter yeah yeah it's cool man she's, i feel she's like you have the birds of a feather man dude yeah she's cool man as, as i say i met kelsey when i met kelsey i met her um she came into i think she came into the label or something and i was just running about being a yeah fucking idiot as i always am <laughs> i mean in the label i'm always like ah! and, and she was like oh i was like you're that girl with harry styles thing on your face right and she was like yeah and she's from australia and then yeah. i was like cool i love aussie so sick yeah right on man all right let's get back to some of your fans uh all right uh snow uh snowflake blood wants to know uh what is the most criminal thing you've ever done uh mine was stealing a kinder egg from tesco when i was like six what is the most criminal thing I've ever done? I remember, basically, when I was younger, I used to run into um, a shop, and I was underage, and I used to put, like, cans of Jack Daniels and Coke down my pants. <laughs> and I think I kept going back, so the more drunk I would get, the less kind of sneaky I would be. I remember that it was a family, it was, like, 
we're all like knew each other. Do you know what I mean? In my village, so I had these cans of Jack Daniels down my pants, and I kept coming back every fucking hour and walking out with nothing after buying anything. And um, I remember um, it was a shop called Baines's Shop in 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 um, in Barnsley, and this guy caught me, and and because they were big brothers of my mate. They would literally sit me down, sat me down. I was like, right, we're calling the police. And I spent two hours thinking I was going to get arrested. But then they were just like, ah, we're messing with you. Don't steal from us again. <laughs> Clip around the head and I ran out of the shop. There you go. <laughs> Lesson learned, man. I love that. Um, let's get into uh, Die for the Hype wants to know, what's the most memorable fan moment uh, you've had on the last tour or the most memorable interaction with a fan? Um, I think I think I wrote a song about it. There's a song called Mars coming out. And it's about, um, it's about um, an incredibly inspiring young person who told me a story about their kind of journey in terms of their um the, the way they identify um in their sexual identification and it just blew me away and i wrote a song about it i won't go too much into it you'll see but it like the song when it comes out it'll tell the story and it and it kind of blew me away it made me cry my eyes out you know what i mean which is sick so the first time that like a fan experience uh, inspired you to write a song um, no, like no, a, I mean, a direct fan experience. I, as I say, I think my fan base, like, if, like, I, I always said, like, if you are out there and you feel like you ain't got anywhere to belong and you feel like that, um, the world doesn't make sense, come here and because there's a lot of people who feel exactly like you, you know what I'm saying? And I think with it all, they, the stories I hear every day from them good bad happy sad fucking mental dark light everything make me um make me legitimately inspired and excited so i always write about them most yeah. of the new albums about them do you know what i mean that's awesome that's really cool uh, how's the album coming along by the way oh dude it's done it's ready to go just is it really press. just gotta put the last bits of salt and pepper on it you know what i mean so right i don't on. make it's just um, tastes good. If none of this has been announced, I'm not trying to mess anything up, but how, do you, have you said how many tracks there are? Um, as I say, I mean, I've got about 30 tracks to choose from and to okay. narrow it down. And everyone's going to be like, just release them all. I'm like, no. Oh, totally. It needs yeah. to make sense. Of course. Um, have you thought at all about, like, you, you've done so well on your own, but also simultaneously done really well with the collab stuff. Do you do you have any thoughts on which route you want to go? Do you want a little bit of both on the album? Um, I don't think so. I think this is going to be just me, I think. Okay, nice. I was like, exploring the idea, but I don't know. I think I, this, this album's weird, man. I see, like, I see 21st Century as, like, a chapter. My first record was, like, a, um, a chapter in this story. Do you know what I mean? This story is, like, a neat whiskey, uncensored story about life you know what i mean and like 21st century like was almost a pawn in that big game you know so like yeah. i think with it i think i'm just gonna stick to myself i think for this one it's nice. a story that i gotta tell about me yeah it's exciting it's exciting um all right uh be fucking happy man wants to know if be you and tom happy. gavin and michael were drag queens for a day what do you think your and their names would be Wow, um, I think Gav, Tom, yeah. it's hilarious. I'm literally with him. I live with him. Um, Tom would probably be Tom. What would your drag queen name be? Um, Gavin's would probably be um, Glorious Gavino. Okay. Tom's would probably be. Um, Adams is champagne Mercedes. <laughs> what the hell? That's amazing. That Tom is um, the Renaissance painting. She looks like a little. <laughs> we call him like a, a little Renaissance painting. He's like a little cute little like muscular, like prince. Now nah, Tom would be called the Dauphin, um, and I'd probably be called um, Sarah. Just Sarah. Cause First name it. basis. I Cause like fuck it. it. Champagne Mercedes rules, by the way. That should be a song. That's actually, it's like legitimate, like, 
Champagne Supernova for 2020. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Um, all right, that's awesome. Man. Love the creativity. Um, all right, uh, Leonard, I don't know. We're just going to call him Leonard, a bunch of numbers. Uh, wants to know, what do you think about a collab with Melanie Martinez? I guess they're Melanie Martinez. Oh, I love Mel- Melanie Martinez, man. She's bonkers. I think she's so sick. Yeah. Like, I love her. She's um, she's just a fucking legend, man. She, she created a world, and, like, I want to be a part of that world, man. She's really cool. Yeah, I think of her in the same way, uh, in some respects to you, where I like that there's this new wave of artists seemingly that really uh, value that world, right? They don't, you're not you, and Melanie's another case of this, you don't just give people songs, you build a community, you build a world, you build a, a universe. That's it, man, I think I remember, I remember um, Keith Moon said, like, I'm the best Keith Moon style drummer out there. Right. And I love that, do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm only, the only young blood sounding young blood out there and you know what i mean and I, that's what i always wanted to be you know did you ever though like at any point in your artistry or life maybe when you're way younger try to sound like somebody else or try to be someone else and I, say, I, am a product to my, I am a product to my influences you know what i'm saying like right i was obsessed with liam gallagher as a kid i was obsessed with bowie as i was i was obsessed with gaga you know what I mean? I think all that's been thrown in a mixing bowl and, and then something else has come out. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. No, no, you're so, like, there's nobody like you. So I was curious if, like, when you were younger, you tried doing, like, the copycat thing and then it didn't work and you learned the lesson to just Yeah, I think, to be honest, when I, when I first moved out of London, I, I kind of went down to London at 15 and a lot of people said to me that didn't, that didn't get it because I was like this kid in makeup and a skirt talking about, fucking politics and like this is never gonna this will never get played on the radio you know what i mean i was like and i was like and when you when you sat in some like 50 year old white dude's office with like five gold records you go do you know i mean yeah they know what the kids want don't they those, yeah. I mean, those 50 year old white dudes, they know what the kids <laughs> want. And you know I mean, you kind of mess yourself into this circle and go, oh, oh shit. my gosh. You know what I mean? And I just think it's about building community. You know what I mean? That's always what it's been about. It was that literally was about going, like, I feel, I don't feel like it's all right to be in this world. So. Does it, one, does anybody else feel that way? And two, do you want to go to Mars together? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, a thousand percent. And you, as in the wise words of Kanye, right? You got to listen to the kids. Which you, yeah, do. I mean, you listen to the fans, man. Always, man. That's what it's, it's like a conversation. You know what I mean, I never want to. I never want to have like. I never want to come out of a gig and get into like a a car with a metaphorical finger up my ass. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I always want to just be one of them because yeah. I am one of them. Yeah. Uh, all right, real Lenny wants to know: Did a lot of Adam questions? Did Adam teach you how to do pasta yet? Adam did teach me how to do pasta. Yeah, I'm actually getting pretty good. The problem with pasta, right, is I have I'm riddled with ADHD. You know, what I'm saying riddled with the stuff. It's everywhere. So like, you have to knead the fucking pasta for like 20 minutes, and it's hard because I'm just like, <laughs> I'm bored. I'm like, oh, a butterfly. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Like, need, need, butterfly. Need, need, butterfly. <laughs> you know, they make butterfly pasta. Oh, I mean, I, that butterfly pasta would be very hard to do. Thank you so much for that, yeah. sir, because everyone's going to be asking me to make that. So, <laughs> fuck you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh we're gonna keep i don't dude all these questions are about cooking man they really want you to be a chef or something they uh um did you do i didn't ask you the ratatouille question right a ratatouille question no, no you didn't ask me no that. okay i'm not even sure there's a ton here uh if you could be ratatouille and control chef warrington to make you a plate what would it be and by oh, the way what? adam's pasta looks so delicious um, what what would I do if I could be in Chef Warrington's at? I would probably ask him to make me, uh, if I could have anything, I miss fish and chips, man. I miss, like, a chip shop. So if I could be in Ratatouille's at, I would, like, squeeze his hair, make him make fish and chips in a, in, a, in the best way possible. Nice. God, I love fish and chips, man. Oh. With a side of butterfly, butterfly pasta. Oh, flat oh. out, man. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to a couple more and then, um, We'll let you go on your way here, uh, young blood. It goes, uh, 
This comes from Music Rocks 2014. They say, uh, hi, I'm Lana, and I uh, got the chance to meet you at Warp Tour in New Jersey, and you were really nice. What was the one thing uh, always on your mind right before going on stage? Um, for one, it's hot, it's red hot. <laughs> um, when I was on Warp Tour, but I think, uh, to be honest, I was like, for every show I go on, man, I look in a mirror, I have this weird thing where I go like, ah, and scream in the mirror before I go on it. I was like, what's that? And I was like, Dom's just screaming again. <laughs> um, and I just can't wait to get on that energy, man. It, it, it kind of, it's where I feel at home. I feel like I belong there. You know what I mean? When you walk on stage and all this chaos just goes mad around you and everyone's falling and screaming. Like, if you've ever been to a, one of our shows, like, people just go, that's the loudest show I've ever been to. The just the energy just doesn't stop. No one drops the ball. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, amongst all this chaos, I kind of just go and retract and everything just feels like the world came together. It's kind of mad. I'm just like, whoa, what just happened? It's like a science experiment, like a rock and roll science experiment. Always, Always like, melding together. Just like, just like pour a bit of chemicals into each other. <laughs> yeah. and so like the roof feels like it's going to explode, but then the roof punches the energy back. So it's just like yeah. everyone just like heads just go. <laughs> <laughs> totally, I love the sound effects. Um, all right, this is a final question. Uh, this comes from uh, the alternative radio station in Buffalo. It looks like, and uh, they want to know. First off, I love Youngblood and hope he is uh, well in this weird time of life. Pun intended. Uh, my question I want to ask is: What advice do you have for kids who want to be artists, and what are the key steps and tips? Um, I would legitimately say, um, tell your story, because be yourself because everyone else is taken. I think connect with people and find a reason to write these songs inside your soul. You know what I mean? I think, fi like, to be an artist as opposed to, like, a, whatever, a singer or a karaoke singer, I think it's a different thing. I think what you have to do is just look inside yourself and look for other people. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy to be like, this is what my song's about. And yeah, it's like, it's got to be a conversation or no one's going to want to listen to you because you're talking to yourself. I always want to talk to other people because that's why I did it. I wanted conversation. I had no conversation. I was lonely as fuck. So I just think find a reason why people want to hear what you've got to say. Because anyone can sing. It's about meeting people and figuring out a reason why you want to do it for a way that's more than just for personal gain. It's about, you know what I mean? It's about being moved and about being connected. It's about taking a wire out of your brain and putting it in someone else's and going... Whoa, we think the same. You think your songs is the start of a conversation as opposed to just like, you know, like a static Absolutely. piece of art? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I mean, everything like I want my songs to kind of ensue for and make people change perceptions and make people feel good and, do you know what I mean? And make people feel all right to be who they are, no matter what they are. Yeah, if you uh, this is this will this will be the one Kevin question I ask. No, uh, young young blood fan from New York. Um, do you, what do you would you say is like the greatest accomplishment or achievement that you can achieve by writing music or creating music? Is it is it making somebody uh, feel comfortable with themselves? Is it making somebody feel like they, they belong? Or you know, yeah, I think I, if I was to get it by a bus tomorrow, yeah, you know I mean, touch what I don't. But if I was, I would want to be remembered by being part of a community that changed a perception within culture because that many of us were loving each other that hard we can't and we got we reached that many people and got that big we changed the way the world perceived things mm -hmm. that would be my biggest goal right. and left it a better place yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And left it a better place for some people. We don't have to, like, we don't have to, like, you know what I mean? To, to be like, let's cure the world is a big statement. But 
to cure part of it and to cure people and to get a foundation. Right. That's like the goal. Yeah. Totally, bro. All right. Well, when this is all over, we hope to see you in New York, man. It's always fun. Dude, flat out, man. I love. I miss NYC so much. I was actually talking about that this morning. I was like, I miss London. I miss. I miss the city. Yeah. I, I miss the with, noise. I was joking with them in the chat before you got here. The last time I saw you, you got the NYPD called out on a set MTV. Yeah, baby. Ran out there. That, was, that was such a good day. Wasn't that was it, so crazy. I was just like, I was like, dude. I remember. And I walked in. I was like, so adrenaline rushed and we were talking <laughs> on telly and I was like I was like I think I'm gonna try and lick your face or something I don't mean to I'm just mad <laughs> that was awesome man alright well cool dude be well you're obviously staying safe and that's awesome yeah and, uh, you too we'll man to be soon. safe out there and I'll see you I'll see you um, I'll see you on MTV hopefully when, when we're back peace bro see ya bye man thanks for watching if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications from Radio.com. While you're at it, why don't you check out some of our other great videos?